nestled in England's glorious northwest, lies the town of Accrington, home to a football legend, with its roots planted in the turf of the world's first football league. But mounting debt forced the club to hang up its professional boots mid-season in 1962. However, it remains emblazoned in the nation's memory, partly thanks to an 80s milk ad. Accrington Stanley, who are they? Exactly. The club's renaissance came in 2006, when they emerged from the lower league obscurity to rejoin professional football in Coca-Cola League Two. It's an absolute farce. Bollocks. Spend some money on grasses and put the manager in the cage. Mm. It's been a turbulent season for the smallest club, with one of the biggest names in football. Billy Big Bollocks, eh? That lot, Billy Big Bollocks. Eh? As Accrington Stanley's second season back in the Football League draws to a close, their position looks safe. We're not holding the ball up, we're not defending strong enough, we're not playing the right balls. You take your fucking pick. But the future for many of the squad is far from certain. Even with that fate dangling, end of term fever has spread among the players. So I think it's <laughs> Chairman Eric Worley has his own take on how to move forward. As, as a team, you know, we've done all right. I mean, people people say to me, it's like we're in the conference for third year running. You know, we're still in the football league, which is the main aim. But, you know, we don't just want to survive and, you know, do like clubs have been in the league for 44 years in the bottom tiers of the football league. You know, we want to progress and we certainly won't progress with the, the, the side that we had this year. We'll probably play our last game on Saturday and we'll probably come in for training next week. And we won't really train, but we'll come in and, you know, the gaffer will be having his meetings with you know, the players and telling them what his plans are for next year and whether he wants to keep them or not. It's going to be especially difficult seeing people who we really care about uh, or will miss next year, whether they get a contact or not, and hopefully they will for, for the, the team spirit side of it, but not only that, they're, they're good players as well, but what we've achieved this year, we want to try and step on on that, so obviously the manager will be looking for probably better players, so that's the uh, horrible side of football, I'm afraid. For the players, it is a big time for them because half of the squad will be playing for new contracts and, uh, you know, for them it's imperative that they put on a performance and hope the uh, manager will fancy them for next year. 75% will realise that they're not going to get offer another contract here. By the, the managers leaving them out of the team, not having them sat on the bench, you know, letting them sit at stand, I'm sure that um, you know, the players, there'll be one or two that w won't realise that, but most of them will realise that they won't be here next year. Football is a tough game. As the players steal themselves for the worst, Eric's concerns become fixed on the club's major sponsor, coach company Fraser Eagle. A series of phone calls have gone unanswered. Is the club itself about to be dropped? Chief Exec Rob Hayes and Eric head off to a crisis meeting. We've been trying to get hold of them for a month now and they haven't uh, responded. You know, I mean, I find that a little bit... Um... Well, I don't know what the right word is, ignorant to what, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, they're the sponsors and we're the receivers, you know. They've decided that they don't want to be the, the front of the shirts anymore, so they're just going to uh, just going to carry on with the uh, with the naming rights, but unfortunately it means a, a drastic reduction in... Um, in the money that they give us, we're down to about 40%. So it's obviously quite a big hole in our budget and means that we have to find a, a shirt sponsor in the next six to eight weeks. We knew things weren't right, you know, we were expected, you know, trimming down on this policy, which, you know, was acceptable because there is a, a credit squeeze and we accept that. But coming and saying that they've taken 60% of the sponsorship is, you know, it's just like devastated me, certainly, because at the end of the day, you know, where are we going to get that money from? We're only a small football club, we're the smallest gates in the Football League, but, you know, I reckon we've got the biggest name in, certainly in, in League Two, 
you know, which hopefully somebody will, will come along and sponsor us. The search is on to plug a huge financial hole in Aki's coffers. Office, please. One shirt sponsor needed with a few groats plus to spend. Roundsman Gary Lewis has been doing some searching of his own. Soul searching. As the season draws to a close, Gary has come to a big decision and handed in his notice. I just made the decision to leave. Uh, we didn't have any equipment at the end of the day, and it reflects on your work. No tractor, no um, spikers, no mower. And as time went on, it just got worse and worse and worse. And I used to work for a Saturday, uh, walking on there and getting the response off the people, the spectators when they arrived. You know, if you can stand there and look at your pitch that you've done, and you feel a bit proud, you know what I mean? And especially if you get a good performance as well. As you know, I to Stanley, they don't get a big gate, they don't get a big crowd, so they've not got a lot of money to spend. And it, it was just a bare, absolute bare bones for the pitch. Fertilizers, weed killers, it was like big bar of steel, you know, whitening and things like that. Well, which, which you can't blame because it's a club that, you know, they don't get good gates, so they've not got the money to spend on things. And you can only sort of paint over the cracks so long, then it starts to show. Before he goes, Gary has been asked to cover the penultimate game of the season. Aquit and Sandy have made it to the semi-finals of the historic Lancashire Senior Cup. For over 100 years, every Northwest club across every division has vied for this silverware. Stanley are in the semi-finals and their opponents, Liverpool, a clash of two of the biggest names in football from the top and tail of the professional leagues. Lancashire Cup rules state that at least six players from the club's first team must be selected to play in the tournament. Hopes are high for a turnout by a big name or two from the Premiership Club. Gerard and Torres didn't play at the weekend, though, so there was a rumour that they were being rested for tonight, but I think that they've got another game on, uh, on Wednesday, something to do with the Champions League or something. Stanley's magnificent cup run comes to now. Watching the 3 0 defeat was too painful for some. I left at half time. I couldn't put up with that rubbish for much longer, so I cleared off at half time. You know, I think the, the performance was absolutely abysmal, and, uh, you know, I wasn't prepared to stop and watch that uh, rubbish. When you see the players, just as if they're not interested, they're not bothered, and you know, I think it's uh, it was time for me to clear off. We'd already beat Preston, we'd already beat Blackpool, both away from home, and uh, you know, when it was a mixed side with the squad members that don't get a game, they, they, they did really, really well against those clubs. So it makes me wonder why the so-called uh, superstars, as one or two of them think they are, that uh, they turned up and never put a performance in. So they got what they deserved. Nothing. Nothing will come of nothing. Eric, like King Lear, must keep his kingdom in order. New groundsman here. Hey, Ed. New right. groundsman Martin Buttercook arrives, greeted by good news. Can you do? A new tractor for you next week. Don't mention it. No, well, not a new Reconditioned. one. Reconditioned. I got a phone call off my sister and who works here, Vicky, and uh, I come in and Eric offered me a job. So, you know, I thought I'd best have a go at it. I've known Eric for years and years, so, you know, I don't think there'll be a problem there. Uh, probably know him 25 years nearly. So, if you know how to uh, suss him out, sort of thing, he should be alright, yeah. Even with one game left in the season, Buzzer still has to dive in with his boots on. Our new groundsman soon finds himself knee-high in action on the pitch. It's a bit waterlogged at the moment, to be honest. We've had a bit of a problem with British weather again. But fingers crossed, the next couple of days have got to be all right. Uh, fine, hopefully, this afternoon and tomorrow. Saturday's got to be a roaster, so we should be OK for Saturday. 
Also up to his neck in it, assistant manager Jimmy Bell. His day in court has arrived. A fourth official's claim of abusive language resulted in Jimmy being banished to the stands during the home game against MK Duns. Sit down or I'll put you in the stand. Jim, I'm telling you, sit down or put It's an accusation he vigorously denies. The commission went through all the evidence. We had a very good hearing. Um, they just decided uh, at the end of the day it was uh, the fourth official's word against mine. Uh, I put my case across. Uh, the heard um, all sides to the arguments. Uh, Graham Beam was fantastic for me, argued my case. Uh, and we retired and went back in, and they just they upheld it, uh, said that, you know, they thought, you know, they took the, the fourth official side, put it that way. Jimmy is fined £300. You've got to sit on it to start it. There's another committee of sorts getting buzzer buzzing. The pitch needs sorting for the final game of the season against Berry. Chairman Eric takes a moment to consider an unknown future as the reality of being dropped by his shirt sponsor hits home. But there's more trouble at Mill just around corner. <laughs> Sunshine burgers and baps, the true start of the English summer. Today is the finale to Accrington Stanley's second season in League Two. Balloons are invaded, spirits are high, but sitting under a cloud is chairman Eric Warding. This is certainly the last game of the season and um, I can't say I'm sorry. Sinister news has dampened his spirits. I got a phone call from the Football League last night asking me to uh, just have, have a look at the irregularities of the uh, betting on the Accrington Stanley versus Bury game. There's over £100,000 gone on, and the major bookmakers, William Hills and them, have, have stopped taking bets. It's a huge thing, and uh, I think somebody might get in bother here. The irregular betting attracts the presence of FA observers to see fair play. At the last minute, all four officials are changed to eliminate any potential claims of match fixing. In the dressing room, it's business as usual for Aki's passionate manager, John Coleman. We have to finish the season high, and you've got to try and give the fans something to want to come and watch. And that's only by winning games. You should have a set, certain standard that you aspire to yourself. And the minute you drop below that, you're the ones who've got to get yourself back on track. Not me and Jimmy screaming at you. You're the ones who've got to raise your game. No, you're talking about him not scoring. Well, let's give him a chance to score. Let's put the balls in the box so he has an opportunity to score. It's a fearsome fight. And Aki have some early chances to get on the score sheet. Then disaster. It's a Berry penalty. The visitors go one up against the early run of play. A minute before the half, and a second Berry goal buries Aki hopes. It's a 2 0 loss. Despite a sterling effort, Stanley's high spirits are dampened. Still, we have the end of season tradition. It sees head of security Mick Schultz get wet, wet, wet. <laughs> The team, meanwhile, drowned their own sorrows. Can't fault you for that. Thought that as well as we played. Certainly at home for, I'd say, three or four months. But you can't keep missing chances like you have. So that's a be for fucking disaster. We were giving stupid goals away. You can't tell me that you must feel that you deserve not to draw that game, to win the game. I feel for you. I feel more for me than so. I mean, that's going to be it. As someone said before, we can't go through another fucking season like this. We've got too much ability in here to want to achieve like we have me. The FA assessors are satisfied there is no skullduggery. So Monday morning brings a debrief on proceedings. I've heard some great rumours this week. I got told I got arrested on Saturday night. And then I got told this morning on the way to work that I was coming in to resign. 
Well, if anybody did come and watch the game, I don't think it was for lack of effort. But like I said, you know, to our manager, that uh, at the end of the day, if anybody has been betting for us to lose, you know, they'll be in deep trouble or they'll be looking for fresh jobs at another club. I can only speak from my own experience. From myself and Jimmy, I know that certainly we're not involved. And, you know, I, I think I would have stamped on my granny to score on Saturday, would have been playing. And I think I nearly did on the bench at one stage. From stamping on granny to walking on eggshells, John Coleman is about to face the hardest part of his job, letting players go. You tend to spend more time with these people than you do with your family, so you, know, you tend to class them as, you, as part of your family. But, you know, football has to move on and progress. And the sad part is that if you don't put certain people out to work, they'll put you out to work. So, you know, it's not a case of dog eat dog, it's a case of my job is to try and do what's best for Atkinson Stanley Football Club. And, you know, certain players are going to have to be released in order to create space to bring new players in. I'll find it difficult to sell them all, to be honest. There's no one I, who, I, who I dislike or I, I don't get on with. And, um, but, you know, it's some other line, it's time to move on. At the training ground, players are being put through their paces. Who stays and who goes will be determined in a series of one-to-ones with both managers. It's D-Day for all. To actually tell, um, you know, 18-year-old kids that, you know, you've got to go out now to the big wide world and possibly there's no future for you. Playing professional football, you're going to have to work for a living. That's very, very hard, you know what I mean? And, and especially when that's their dream. Their dream is to be a professional footballer. And when you'd have to tell them that, you know, your dream isn't going to come through, lad, it's, it's really difficult. You know, I've never had a problem having to tell somebody that we don't need them anymore and the requirements, you know, in business, so it's, um, you know, what we want from, from them. And it's, it's not been hard. Thing is, at the football club, you know, a lot of these lads or go back down into non-league and they'll struggle really to make a living out of playing football. In business, you know, you have to let people go to survive and we're no different than anybody else. So you got the way sharp away, didn't you, you shitbag? What do you want me to do? Hold your hand. <laughs> hey. So what happened? Well, football. With up to a dozen players released, manager and chairman get down to the prickly issue of squad numbers for next season. We've got one player who's out of contact, who'll be offered a new contact. Everybody else won't be offered. Yeah, I don't contact. think anybody's to argue with that. And what about the rest of the. Your favourites? My favourite players. You just hate them all, don't you? I just hate all players. Yeah. Just, just be honest, they should make the They should fucking play for nothing. How many players are you thinking of, of bringing in new to the club? <laughs> Twice as many as what you think I want to bring in. We're going to start trying to bring four top quality players to the club immediately. And then add from there where we think necessary. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of the current squad or go. We're left with a good five-a-side team. Yeah, five-a-side team and five kids. Yeah. Yeah, good. An out-of-season friendly is an opportunity to spot new talent. I need a striker. I desperately need a striker. And I don't get one of my to have to lose a couple of stone myself. In Stanley's search for fresh blood, the net is cast far and wide. Chartered and into a little bit of unknown territory. With uh, we've got a few Argentinians who've been sent over. So you know, um, we're, we're looking for you know something that you know might set the league alight a little bit raw. We can do a little bit of work with, and you know, possibly get a contract with the club. Football dreams can take you far. For a handful of Argentinians. A northern, rain-swept pre-season friendly will be their first taste of the English game. The Premiership is, is what it is, you know, it's worldwide, it's, it's 
fantastic uh, selling the English game. And it is where it all starts. This is the grassroots, you know what I mean? People move up all the time from League Two into the higher leagues. First of the close season signings is left back Chris King. The traditional photo opportunity, however, might be a problem. She wants to take pictures. We have to. Well, we need. Yeah, really. We can get some scars. Let's go some football. Yeah, Players are not the only new signings. Combined Stabilization Limited, experts in preparing groundwork for construction, have decided to cement their new shirt sponsorship. Well, long time as well, that's what we wanted to stay for the short term, it's going to be for a good few years. Premiership will be on. <laughs> it would be a, a massive step for Accrington Stanley to go into League One. Uh, I think that would be, but I think it's certainly achievable. I think the club has got on the ball, and, but if we can build on the experience that we've learned over the last couple of years, I think you know we could we could challenge it a bit better than what we have done in the past two seasons. And we just need to maybe just get a little bit of luck and maybe get a few more better players, and we can maybe take that next step. Well, it's been a difficult year from the gates have fallen and. Um... You know, it's been really hard, but uh, I'm sure that uh, we have learnt and uh, we hope that we can progress next season. You've got to be optimistic, which we're in the wrong game. Accrick and Stanley are the lifeblood of football. A solid core of supporters bred on aspiration. Still smiling, you see, because whatever the score, when you're a Stanley fan, you are victorious. A wonderful Lancashire human. You wouldn't be half of them with washes, would you? A staff prepared to sweat and toil. I'll go through my old pictures first and then I'll crack on. A bluff, blunt chairman. Who pays you away? Just remember that. A local lad with eyes on the brass. They must think we're fucking money grows on trees. Small clubs have achieved high ambition. So onwards and upwards, little Accrington stand there. So one day, no one will say. Accrington Stanley, who are they? Exactly.